for more than 10 years at Rice now, we've been dreaming about ways to make better neurotechnology. Devices that could stimulate, record brain activity, things that could eventually be as small as possible so that people would be able to adopt therapeutic technologies without a significant surgical procedure. And we imagined, well, it would have no batteries. It could be something perhaps the size of a pea that could be implanted without ever touching the brain and sit beneath the skin above the skull. Now to do that, we had to solve a ton of engineering problems. The big one was how do we provide energy to something that doesn't have a battery? This device is actually focused on temporary treatment, temporary stim stimulation. Simulates what's happening with transcranial magnetic stimulation. So with TMS, you go into the clinic um, and they're using TMS to treat depression. So people will go into a clinic, they have a giant machine that applies a magnetic field to their brain for like an hour, a couple hours a day. And so we're trying to make that into something that you could do at home. Now what we discovered is that there's a material, um, a magnetoelectric material, that harvests energy very efficiently from a magnetic field, more efficiently than devices that have been previously demonstrated. What that allowed us to do was to build a device the size of a pea this big, that had enough energy to stimulate human brain activity in the operating room. That was a big deal for us. It is the first time that anything from our lab has been used in a human subject. This, this project specifically is really exciting because it was kind of the prototype device for Motif. Um, and so that's really exciting to see that they now have enough money and enough people to actually make this into a medical device that could make an impact in the next five years. Um, so it's really exciting to be part of a project that has this translational focus. You think about a pacemaker, a you know, heart pacemaker, it's a very routine kind of part of cardiac care. In neurological psychiatric disorders, the equivalent is deep brain stimulation, or DBS, which is a terrible branding. You know, it just sounds scary and invasive. It's not, but that perception is important, and it's going to keep a very low ceiling on the number of people who could benefit from a therapy like DBS that won't. So here's where, you know, technologies like this come in, which are going to be more acceptable, tolerable. A 30 minute minor procedure done in an outpatient, you know, kind of surgery center, which is what this device, you know, would be implanted with, is very different than something that has to be done in an academic medical center uh, with general anesthesia, with a lot of high tech equipment. The vision for the technologies that we're making is that we could create therapies for conditions that don't respond to drugs. Today, if you suffer from a mental health condition like depression, there's about a 30% chance that you're not gonna to respond to two or more drugs and may not respond to five or more. For people like that, we think there are opportunities to provide for them therapies that they cannot get any other way. Those therapies are gonna come from devices like these that can stimulate the brain directly in ways that drugs can't.